Okay. I don't have to look at that. Now I can just focus on you wherever you are out there. So we started with the pelvis, which typically we would do in somatics because the pelvis is the center of your physical body. And then I took you down to your toes and we worked our way back to the pelvis. And today we're going to start from the fingers and work our way into the shoulders. And so the idea is that we're going to work our way back in back to center from the periphery. So yesterday with the toes and today with the arms. And this seat practice is done seated. I call it my body prayer for my upper body. I'm sitting on the floor, but I'm going to give you a a stern talking to that if you are not used to sitting on the floor and meditation for a half an hour, please sit in a chair because all you'll be doing is you'll be fighting your legs and your spine sitting on the floor versus sitting in a chair and being comfortable. And we want to be able to focus on our upper body and our arms and our shoulders. So please feel free to grab a chair. And as you find that chair or floor, just rock side to side because we want to have a nice posture in our spine. Rock side to side and see if you can feel your two sides, your buttocks, but also your sits bones. We talk about those a lot in yoga. And we want to be sure that even if we're sitting in a chair, we're not falling back into the chair. So I'm a big fan of backless chairs or stools because we have to sit upright and instead of the spine resting on the chair, the spine holds itself. So rock forward a little bit. We did our pelvic tilting the first day, so this comes in handy here. You can tilt back on your exhalation and tilt forward on your inhalation from a seated posture. And it's still that as I come forward, I'm gonna feel my duck butt, out. my low back will shorten, and I don't wanna sit there. I don't wanna sit with too much shortening in my low back. And then as I rock back, I go into my dog in trouble tail, so my tail comes forward, and my <clears throat> front belly is scrunched. So somewhere in between there is right where I wanna be, in my pelvis in a neutral position. And typically you might be able to feel it because you'll, you'll feel those sits bones, you'll feel like you're more towards the fronts of your sits bones. So I'll turn towards you. And then once we get there into our pelvis, so we set the pelvis first, that's our fine tuning, fine, fine -tuning fork for the rest of the body. And then once the pelvis is set, we can go into the shoulders. And the easiest, quickest way to do it is just take a big breath in, invite your breath in, say good morning to your breath, and exhale, sigh out the mouth. And you know how it feels to sigh, just, just let your shoulders drop. Let that happen and notice where they land. So you typically in a sigh, we don't, and then fall forward, we come into a natural position. We don't wanna draw our shoulders so far back again that we're creating that arch in our back. We don't wanna be here. That's called green light reflex in somatics. But we also don't want to be hunched here with the shoulders forward. That's red light reflex. So right in between, just take that sigh. And then we'll address your head and your neck. So take your position. Think of your space from your nose to if you had a low ponytail right here. And just gently take your head back and forth from the ponytail nose. So as opposed to moving from our chin, that's a lot bigger movements for the neck. I just want to take ponytail nose back and forth or think of your soft palate in your mouth until it feels like the head is just resting on top of the neck, but truthfully, the head is resting on the pelvis. Feel yourself all the way down. And then we'll pause for a moment. We're going to do the arms separately today. That's how I typically like to do them because oftentimes we do find imbalance or asymmetries in the body. But if you're ever in a hurry, these movements can be done very um, meditatively, doing both arms together as well. So we'll start though, let's start with the right hand today. So the position of the arm is we reach out, and then instead of feeling like the arm is pulling out of the socket, we wanna plug the upper arm bone into the shoulder blade. So from the side, it would look like this. I'm reaching, there's my Frankenstein reach, but I'm also going to draw back. So my shoulder is still underneath my ear. If this position causes you discomfort, then the second position we do is elbow at the side and we just gently let our upper arm bone hug the side body so we can come into an L shape in the arm. Okay, so I'm going to extend my arm 
I prefer that you do this with your eyes closed once you find it. So we're not watching it, we're feeling it. And we're going to go into the fingers first. So very simply, as you breathe in, spread your fingers apart as far as you can. As you breathe out, bring the thumb to the center and gently squeeze the thumb. Make a soft fist. I like to think maybe you're holding some flowers in there. Inhale and spread and exhale and close. So we're focusing on the fingers, but notice how you feel muscles running all the way through the arms, all the way up and through the arms. Opening, so it's very simple, opening and closing the hands. But you also wanna to check to see, are you building tension in the neck or the shoulder? And if so, relocate, relocate that arm into the socket. Just the right hand, all your focus is on what you feel. And then you might get fancy and just roll your right thumb around a little bit because that like your big toe is a saddle joint. So you can roll that around. And then before I finish with the fingers, I just like to do a little flick. So flip your palm up, take your thumb to your index finger first and flick the nail. And then the next finger, middle finger, flick the nail. Ring finger, flick, pinky finger, flick. You can do that a few times if you want. Just to, just to feel, feel your hands, your fingers. And then we'll relax. We're gonna go into our wrist. So wrist is flexion extension, very simple as well. Feel your wrist crease, <clears throat> plug that arm bone in, inhale up and exhale down. And you can play with fingers together versus fingers wide apart. You might feel it differently in your arm muscles or even in the bones. We're just going through flexion and extension. <clears throat> as I did with the legs yesterday, as we go through this first arm, I'll, we'll focus more on the physical sensations. And then we, when we go into the left arm, I'll talk about it on the energetic level. I'll mention that. But feel your wrist, the harmony of the muscles on the upper arm. Sometimes I even place my hand on my arm so I can feel those muscles in the upper arm and the lower arm. Just the coordination that goes on. And then we're gonna switch that. This one I'll turn towards you so you can see. <clears throat> you're gonna flip your palm up and we'll do radial extension. And you're gonna feel your pinky finger side and your big fingers and your big, your thumb side. And you're just going to go to one side. I like to do inhale in, exhale release. You don't have to do it to your breath. And then to the other side. So like you're drawing your thumb towards your outer arm and release pinky finger to your inner arm, release. It's almost like you're holding something in your hand. So keep those fingers spread. The, the hand will try to come together, but keep the palm open. You could hold a piece of paper, a book on your palm. One more there. And you're probably really feeling this in your arm, right? Even a little bit of fatigue. And then we'll take the palm back down, make that soft fist, like we could hold some flowers in our hand, a peaceful fist. And then this one I do like to bring the other hand in, so your left hand in this, your, in this case, and hold your forearm because what inevitably happens is we're trying to isolate movement from the wrist crease, making circles, and what typically happens is the whole arm moves. So we're flipping our forearm up in order to move the wrist. So if you hold your arm steady, your forearm, you'll notice your mobility might be a little more limited, but you're truly moving from your wrist, going nice and slow. Smooth it out. And by holding the arm too, you might sense the muscles in the forearm. Finding your full range of motion. And you can close your eyes. Remember, we try to be in felt sense. And then switch and go the opposite direction. Checking to see you're not flipping the forearm around. The forearm stays down. Give your shoulder a little break holding the arm as well. But you might be here doing this. Remember, that's, that's fine too. You can keep your elbow at your side if you find that you're building a lot of tension in your shoulder. And then we'll relax the right wrist. Flip your palm up, and now we're going to go into the elbow. So before we start the elbow, just visualize your right elbow. Relax the hand and wrist so the fingers just roll in wherever they need to be. 
And as you exhale, you're going to bend the right elbow and touch towards the back of the shoulder as far as you can go comfortably. And inhale into extension. And exhale, just touching. So this, uh, to me, is a lot like the knee. It's really easy to think we're moving from the elbow, but we're really pulling with our hand and our wrist. So do your best to keep the wrist and the hand floppy and relaxed and visualize the movement coming from the elbow. I notice a difference because I'll feel more bicep, tricep in the upper arm if I really let the hand relax and the wrist relax. Nice, easy flexion extension of the wrist, or excuse me, of the elbow. And then you can hold your upper right arm bone and just make some gentle circles. Elbow doesn't really circle, but just kind of circle it around a little bit. A little play, let it play. That's a big, important part of these practices. The play instinct is in us. We forget as we get to be adults, right? You can switch the direction. But one of the easiest, quickest ways our brain learns or relearns in this case is through play, through the play instinct. It pays attention. All right, and then we'll let the elbow joint relax. So we're going to go into the, the, the biggest part of our arm and shoulder, the shoulder itself. So visualizing, before we even start, just visualize your right shoulder. Maybe you're feeling it from those last movements. I know I am. And we go through what's called a clock face. So I'll be turning towards you and sideways. If we imagine a 12, which is above the shoulder, a 3 behind the shoulder, to the back of the shoulder, a 6 down on the side body, and a 9 in the front of the shoulder, that's our clock face. So we're going to inhale and lift the shoulder up to the 12 o'clock. And here's what we want to be cautious of is that we want to use the muscles in the shoulder girdle, not the arm. So I could use my arm to lift my shoulder up, but I want to keep the arm quiet and relaxed. And if it's trying to help, just place a hand on the arm or imagine, flip your palm up and imagine a heavy stone in your hand. So you're moving from the shoulder. So our 12 o'clock is upward. And then we slowly relax it down. The next one we do is our three o'clock. So the shoulder goes back, what you should sense is that the shoulder blade is sliding towards the center of the spine. You might feel a little stretching through the collarbone area and then releasing. And then the third movement is downward. So that's your six o'clock. Imagine drawing your armpit towards your waist. You might feel a stretch through the top of the shoulder and a tightening through the side body or under the armpit and release. And the fourth one, that nine o'clock, is forward as if you're going to touch the head of the arm bone to your collarbone. And I'm not turning my whole torso. I'm turning, thinking shoulder forward. You'll feel your upper back spread or stretch and a tightening through the pectoral muscles and release. Let's do that two more times. Inhale and lift up. Feel the top of the shoulder and the side of the neck shorten and tighten. Sideways to lengthen. Exhale, slowly release. And back to your three o'clock. Feel the stretch through the front of the collarbones, the tightening through the upper back. Release. Downward, tightening in the waist and the armpit, stretching the top of the shoulder. Release. And forward. Tightening in the front by the collarbone, stretching in the back. Go around one more time on your own in those four spaces. Easy and slow. If you don't want to do it to your breath, you don't have to. But notice I'm not just dropping the shoulder, I'm going down. It's a, it's a mindful, controlled release as well. I want to sense the muscles going back to their neutral position. And then once you finish that last time around, we take those four points on the clock and we roll the shoulder through them as smoothly and slowly as we can, really easily. If you've ever had any sort of injury in your shoulder, rotator cuff injury, anything like that, you're going to find stickiness and it'll be, the, you'll notice because the movements will be jerky. So go even slower through those points. Check to see your hands relax in your arm. You're not using your arm to move your shoulder. The arm is relaxed. <clears throat> the movement is coming from the shoulder girdle. 
rolling around and explore to find your full range of motion. Make it fun. And then if you'd like, you can switch the direction. You can go up and forward and down and back. This gives your mind that little, that's, that's the bait and switch right there, right? Your mind goes, hold on. Same movement, just opposite direction, same muscles, coordinating the other direction. Take your time. One more round, and then relax your right shoulder. Perhaps just take your hands to your lap, whether you're in a chair or sitting on the ground, and flip your palms up. Take a few moments to feel your space from your fingers all the way up into your shoulders, just as we did with the legs yesterday. Just be present and notice what presents itself. Are there any differences between your right side and your left side from the fingers to the shoulders? Does one palm feel heavier, lighter, fingers longer, shorter? Do you just have more awareness of one shoulder than the other? the length of an arm, the weight of an arm, even temperature change, just noticing. Okay, and now we're gonna switch and we're gonna do the left hand. So your right hand's on holiday, it can rest wherever you want. If you're taking your left arm out, reach it out Frankenstein style and then Imagine taking that upper arm bone and plugging it into the shoulder joint or into the, into the I think of my, <clears throat> my shoulder blade in the back there, plugging it in. Feel your fingers, <clears throat> sense your fingers. As you breathe in, you can spread your fingers. Oop, I moved my wrist, see I cheated. Spread your fingers and pull them back. So it's not this, it's just fingers. And as you breathe out, thumb gently comes to the center of the palm and we squeeze the thumb just a little bit to wherever it feels good. Inhaling and spreading fingers and exhaling and gently squeezing. So we're focused mostly on the hands and the fingers, but check to see are you, like sometimes what will happen is that left shoulder will start to ride up and you're tightening everything in this shoulder. So relax your armpit down. Don't let that tension build in the shoulder as you work on your hand. And then after some finger movements and you're feeling it all the way through your arm, you can maybe just roll your thumb around, that happy little thumb joint. Move it around, feel all those tendons and ligaments. And then if you wanna do the flicking with me, you come to your pointer finger and flick, middle finger, I'm just flicking my nail, like you got a bug on there or something. Ring finger, pinky finger. Again, I like to do that with my eyes closed. You can even feel the reverberation as you do that. I can't snap, so it's like a backward snap. <laughs> we were having a discussion the other day about what finger you snap with, and I never realized people snap with different fingers. I thought we all did it the same. <laughs> Last one. All right. And then, you know, if you need to let your arm rest for a lot a minute, because fatigue might build up here, that's all right. But then reach out, plug it in, let your fingers relax. We're going to go into the wrist. So fingers just get to hang. Inhale, wrist up. So you're pulling that into extension. Exhale, wrist into flexion. It's not my fingers leading my wrist, it's my wrist doing the work. Gently going back and forth. And if you're tiring too, you can remember, you can also hold your forearm. So, oh, I forgot, I'm doing energetics. So the first side when we were doing, the f when we were doing our fingers, our fingers <clears throat> are fine tuning devices for the heart. They have to do with grabbing or holding on to our expectations. They're the instruments where we reach for our desires because our hands and arms as a whole are the extensions of the heart in the energetic body. And now we're in the wrists and you're doing this flexion and extension. We'll switch and go into the radial movement, flip your palm up. 
and think of your pinky finger and your thumb side and just draw the pinky finger towards the inner arm and then release thumb towards the <clears throat> excuse me outer arm release and watch that your hands not closing up keep the palm open this one's interesting for me on my my left thumb so I do things like I notice when my body's talking to me, so I can feel my left thumb is really talking to me. It's creating a lot more sensation than it typically would today. So our wrists are angles. They allow for angles of flexibility in our life. And we'll flip that back over, make that soft fist. And if you want to hold your forearm to make sure, first of all, for support for your arm, but also to make sure when we go to do our wrist circles, it's not this it's not the whole forearm moving. The forearm is still, and we isolate it to the wrist. So our wrists are those angles of what and how we manifest things in our lives. We can change the angle of what we're reaching for. And if you didn't do so, you could switch and go the opposite direction with those wrist circles. Watch that your shoulders not crawling up. I'll tend to do that. I'll feel my shoulders start to come up. I have to say, just relax. Back down and relax the hand and the wrist will go into our left elbow. So palm will face up. <clears throat> feel the space of your elbow, the circumference of your elbow. And on an exhalation, bend your elbow, touching the fingers somewhere to the upper or back of the shoulder, maybe the top of the shoulder blade. Inhale into full extension and exhale, come back in. Checking again that you're not reaching with your hand. Palm doesn't need to be open, fingers and wrist relaxed, isolating the movement from the elbow. Our elbows in the energetic world represent what we pull into ourselves and what we push away. Or the other way to think of it is what you attract towards your heart and what you reject. Just going in and out of that elbow bend. Remember, um, if you were doing, by the way, if you're doing elbow at your side for those first ones, this one is better if we do the, the extension of the arm as opposed to arm at the side. And then you can hold your upper arm and just let your elbow play a little bit. Make some nice soothing circles. There's these. There's the physical benefits for the joints, but there's also, as I mentioned, the energetic part. And just remembering that this is a moving meditation. It's a time for you that you're spending present in your body. And then relaxing that. We'll be going into the shoulder, the left shoulder. So I'm turning sideways towards you. Feel your left shoulder. We'll go through the clock movements. The first one is upward towards the 12 o'clock. Top of the shoulder will tighten. You'll feel some lengthening underneath. Exhale, release. And then we go back, pressing the shoulder blade towards the center of the spine. Feel the stretch through the collarbones. That's your 3 o'clock. And release. And sometimes I hold it for two breaths, two, for a few breaths. Pressing down is your six o'clock. Top of the shoulder stretches. You'll feel tightening underneath the armpit. Let go. And forward. And let go. And I notice I'm turning towards you. I really try to keep when I'm doing the shoulder too. Watch that I'm not letting my head move. Keep the crown of the head upward. That ponytail nose is still there. And we'll go around again upward. And release, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, release, 6 o'clock, let go, and 9 o'clock. Do one more on your own. And as you're moving the shoulder, also notice, so is your head trying to move? Can you keep your long spine? We're just locating these four points. And then once we've located them, we can make those full, slow circles all the way around. And just sensing if there's any points where it's jerky or it feels like you try to skip, go even slower. Help your mind by imaging 
the full circles. What can sometimes be really useful is if one shoulder is stickier than the other, particularly if you had an injury, is go back to what it felt like in that first shoulder, how you were able to find that full range of motion easily. <clears throat> Let your mind remember that so that then it can apply that memory to your sticky shoulder. So if I have a sticky shoulder, I will typically do my happy shoulder first. And yes, I do have a sticky shoulder. <laughs> Just to help help retrain. It's kind of like if you've, if you've got a dog and it's a good dog and you decide to get a puppy, the good dog's going to train the puppy, right? <laughs> we hope. And then you can switch and go the other direction, go up and forward and down and back. I tend to use a lot of dog analogies in my practices because we all really want to be like our dogs. Right, Tanner? That whole idea like that we don't, <clears throat> when we're doing meditation and our mind wanders off, even now while you're doing this practice, you know, there may be distractions in your house. Don't scold yourself when you realize that your mind has gone somewhere entirely different. Say thank you. It's like giving the dog a treat, giving the puppy a treat when it comes back. Thank you for coming back into my body where I wanted you to be. All right, and then relaxing that. We are going to finish with one final. We're slightly over a half hour. It's so hard for me to keep these to half an hour, but I do want to do um, our nerve flossing. So the last movement we're going to do is more for the nerves. We have three main nerves. I won't go into it, but in the arms. And you're going to take the backs of the hands together and you're going to point your hands at your heart and just lift your elbows up just slightly. But watch that when you lift your elbows up, your shoulders don't climb up too. So relax the shoulders down so the neck is long. Gently pressing the backs of the hands together and just let your elbows fall. If I'm doing this to my breath, my inhalation will be the opening. My exhalation, I'm coming back to this position. So I'm going to begin to extend and I'm going to keep the hands pressed together until the very end. Once my arms are in full extension, then I'm going to flip my arms or my, excuse me, my wrist all the way into extension. So I'm out here and fully open, fingers spread. Then I'll pull my arms all the way back. And I can feel that all the way into my thumbs, my fingers. Then we come back in. Once our arms are straight off our shoulders again, turn the backs of the hands towards one another, let them press together and come back into the center of the heart. So we really have to get the wrists involved all the way from the shoulders through the wrist. So my inhalation is this, opening up. You can pause there and feel that if you'd like. When you're ready to exhale, come back in, backs the hands together, back to the heart. So I'll turn sideways and show this one too. And these are all so simple. You can do them in a chair, right? You can do them at your desk. Some of them I do on airplanes, if there's room, <laughs> or at least in airports. Maybe not these days. And then backs the hands together. See if you can feel that. So nerve flossing helps to release the nerves if we have chronic pain. And see if you can sense all the way from the shoulders through the fingers as you're doing this. Maybe a little bit of a tingling. What we don't want is pain. If you're feeling pain or your shoulders are driving up towards your ears, relax your shoulders. Last one. And then let the arms come back down. That was hands and arms. Let your palms flip up. If you're still comfortable where you are in your seated position, you can do that. If you'd rather lie down for a minute, we're going to take a moment just to scan, particularly scan the space from our fingers to our shoulders. So our shoulders in the energetics are where our power is. So we hold our power. We always think of superheroes having very big, broad shoulders. They, we say we carry the weight of the world in our shoulders. But we don't want to carry the weight of the world in our shoulders. So our shoulders have to do with how we deal with reality. So taking a moment, just feeling the space from your fingers to your shoulders. Is there anything that you're you're carrying the weight of that you don't need to be. And that lands in your shoulders. And recognizing the arms as an extension of the heart. 
fingers, your fine tuning devices, your wrists that are your angles of flexibility, what you manifest, your elbows, what we draw into ourselves and what we push away. And back to the shoulders, our power. All the way into the center of the heart. If you'd like to, you can place your hands on your heart, creating that circle, closing that circle off between the arms and the heart. Peace, joy, love and light. Thank you. Good morning again.